Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So I have a need to build a small table for my bedroom and I figure now would be a great time to use some of this uh, walnut that I've had sitting on my shelves for years. This walnut was featured in uh, the video about the wood worms and how I treated that wood and eventually killed those worms and um, I might have a video out there where I was milling the lumber. I think uh, I milled it on this on this bandsaw right here. Uh, those are some really old videos. They're at least three years old, maybe older than that. So anyway, this wood is plenty dry and I'm ready to uh, start milling some stuff out of it. I've actually used it for some other projects as well. And I'll go ahead and link all of the videos that I'm talking about down in the description below so you can check them out if you're interested. And um, I'll also provide some links to some of the tools and the products that I use in this video. Just in case you want to learn more about these tools that I use, and uh, these are affiliate links, and so if you purchase through my link anything, it doesn't have to be the actual item, um, I get a commission for it. So anyway, that option is down there in case you guys want to do that. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the project. For the top of the table, I'm going to try to get all of the parts out of this big chunk of wood. And the reason I'm doing that is because this was a yard tree and so it's got lots of knots in it. It's a little more on the rustic side and as you can see, a lot of these boards, even though I stacked and stickered them the right way, a lot of them have become quite bowed and so if I joint these down to get them flat, I probably won't have three quarters of an inch of usable material, which is the goal for the thickness on the top. If I start with this big piece, I can cut them really close to the final dimension on my table saw and then finish them off with the planer. Okay, so I jointed this board on one edge and on two faces. Now a lot of people ask why you can't joint um, one edge and two faces like this and get two parallel uh, faces the way you would on a planer. And the reason is, let's say this, this piece of wood was misshapen and maybe it was narrower up here than it was down here. So this would be wider. So even though you would have two square edges, and I guess the same also goes for if it was narrower here than it would be down here. Either way, you could still achieve two square edges, two square corners, but not have the board be parallel. And so if you're looking for parallelism, you have to use a planer. The reason I jointed the two faces on this one is because my capacity on my saw is not deep enough to be able to cut a board off in one pass. And I could have, I could, I have options, okay? I could use the bandsaw there and cut boards off in that manner. But the blade that I currently have on that bandsaw is a little damaged and so it leaves a bit rougher of a finish than what I would like. So I'm going for the table saw here and I'm going to cut it in two passes. So I will cut it once like this and then I will flip the whole piece end over end and I'm gonna run it through a second time and that'll give me the board that I'm looking for. I'm cutting these at 13 sixteenths so all it should take is just some light planing to get it down to my final thickness of three quarters.
Okay, now it's time to evaluate what we ended up getting out of that piece of wood. So, this piece was on the outside, and as you can see, there's sap wood on this side, which, the sap wood can be a cool look, but this is the only piece that I have with sap wood on it, so I think I could make this side work. So this piece has a small knot on this side, but if I flip it over, that knot is gone, so this piece will work. We're starting to get into some knots here. So I've got several small knots on this board, on this face. Flipping it over, it's not as bad, but it is not ideal as well. So I'm not sure. I mean, I'm going to end up having to use this one. So it's not the end of the world. So I'll probably use that face. Now this one has my arch nemesis in it that I've been dealing with, with all of this walnut. It's the pith. So this was a branch, and this is the center of that, the very center of the branch. And so it just crowned, the, the pith crowned right here, and then it goes back into the wood here. And you can also see the pith right here. There's tons of knots. So I'm probably, Going to use just a portion of this board because I need all five boards um, but I don't need the full width of all five boards so I can just use you know the two-thirds of this board that's good and then this last board turned out pretty good so we just have a, a small knot right here I might be able to cut around it because I only need 26 inches of length and there's some more of that pith there, so I'll definitely be using this side. So, so if I pull out the boards that this one has the knot in it, like that, the, or the multiple knots, this one has the pith, like that, I can get my 14 inches of, of tabletop width out of these five boards. Now I'm gonna spend some time planing these down to a uniform thickness. I'm not gonna take them all the way down to three quarters of an inch yet. I wanna save that for my drum sander. So once I have these planed down to the thickness that I'm looking for, I'm looking for about maybe 13 16 of an inch. I did cut these a little bit larger than 13 16 I will joint the edges so they're perfectly straight and then I will be able to proceed with the glue up at that point. I'll probably do that part off camera, or at least the planing and the jointing, and then I'll bring you back for the glue up. So I intended to let these rest for maybe a day or two, and it's ended up being about two weeks. Uh, a couple other projects behind the scenes took place. Uh, one, one thing was I needed to um, cut these to length, and this saw wasn't here at the time, and I figured now was as good a time as ever to build a nice table saw sled since this is hopefully my forever table saw. So I built this sled out of Baltic birch plywood. Um, I didn't film it because the design is an original. I actually got the dimensions from an old article out of Family Handyman magazine of all places. And then I used the the William Ang five cut method to square this fence up with the slot. And so now I've got this um, angle, this 90 degree angle is like within 0 .0006, so six ten thousandths of an inch over a 13 inch cut. So um, nice and square. Uh, the thing, it, it glides super smooth, as you can see. Um, I just, I've always wanted to have a really nice table saw sled and I've never gotten around to doing it. So um, I use this as an excuse to make one. On top of that, um, I rebuilt one of my guitars. I did that off camera. I uh, repaired and tuned up uh, my dad's snowblower because we have a big snowstorm coming through. And I did that off camera. And I also uh, had modified a couple of um, 
front diff mounts for a four-wheel drive truck and um, I did that off camera. I'm not sure if they would have made any of those would have made really interesting videos and um, to be honest with you making a video about something generally makes that project take two times longer than it needs to be and so I uh, made an executive decision to just knock those out really quick and then I was always planning to coming back to this project um, once I was done with those and then I will film this uh, start filming this again so the plan is to cut all of these boards to uh, close to their final length um, and then I'm going to joint them one more time and uh, glue them up. I'll, there's been the slightest bit of warpage that has taken place over the past couple weeks. You might be able to see a little bit of a gap at the end there and maybe a bow on this one right here. Um, I'm not going to worry about that <clears throat> too much because I think that it's minor enough to where I can uh, just clamp that out when I'm clamping up the panel. So f now I'm going to use my new table saw jig or my new table saw sled and I have marked some spots where I'm cutting trying to eliminate knots where possible. This is the this is the underside of the of the board as you can see the pith of the wood is right here. But I'm trying to avoid the checking and I'm trying to avoid the knots but as you can see I, I it's inevitable unfortunately on some of these pieces so this might this will probably end up being an edge piece so I can get rid of some of this stuff so I got to do a little bit of figuring out and um, see what the best cuts will be on these pieces of wood as you can see milling and air drying your own lumber ends up generating a whole lot of waste of course if that lumber is free I guess it really doesn't matter how much waste there is because it's free wood but sometimes it can be hard to work around these checks and, and since it is kind of yard wood, um, you know, it's not the clearest lumber you're going to work with. So you got to work around a lot of knots and uh, the grain is interrupted quite a bit. Um, so just something to consider. I think I had mentioned in a previous video where I said free wood is not free. And just and that video was about the amount of work it takes to turn a log into usable lumber. And then... So to add on to that, you know, um, you're not going to get super clear wood um, unless you um, have a real bandsaw mill. You can get these really, really huge trunks, you know, that are like 18, 24 inches wide minimum. And that's when you start getting into the clear stuff. Unfortunately, with the equipment that I have, I can only, I max out at around 12 inches, I think, so... I'm never going to be able to get uh, anything um, super clear unless it gets quartered first before I get my hands on it. I actually have out there in the freezing cold out in my driveway, I've got a couple of really large birch logs that hopefully will dry out pretty quick so I can mill them up and see what I get out of them. Okay, so I've just kind of, I've kind of set this up for gluing. Um, I set it in the clamps, just making sure that my clamps are ready to be, uh, you know, engaged. Because once I get the glue on the edges of these boards, I don't want to waste any time because this PVA glue starts drying pretty quick. And I want to have as much, give myself as much open time as I possibly can. Just so I can get a good solid glue up. I'm kind of lining up this edge, but it's not really that important because I can just use my my table saw sled to make a nice square edge when the time comes. Unfortunately, some flaws are going to be on the top. There's not a whole lot I can do about that. Um, I will fill them with some epoxy that's mixed with some graphite, and it'll make a nice black um, infill. And so. It, It'll look nice one way or another.
Well, admittedly, this is the first glue up I've done in a probably a year and a half at least. So regardless of how prepared I was, it was still pretty frantic. I have a couple more clamps I got to slap on. But as you can see, I used some calls and just trying to keep the board as flat as possible to minimize the amount of time I got to spend on the drum sander. All right, I pulled the tabletop out of the clamps and now I'm just going to use a chisel to remove the excess glue and I'll also use a card scraper just to level this out to prepare it to run through the drum sander. Now that my tabletop is perfectly flat, all the joints are perfect, I'm going to grab my table saw sled and I'm going to cut my first 90 degree cross cut. And then after that, I will just cut this to its final dimensions, which I believe is gonna be 16 by 24, but I'll have to check my drawings. Well, my finished tabletop ended up having fewer blemishes than I had anticipated, which is good. I was able to cut off this section, which had one, two, three knots, some pith here, and some type of an inclusion here, and a couple other flaws. So that's a lot nicer. Um, so now all I have to do is I just have to fill this knot, this knot, and whatever this inclusion is here. And um, hopefully that'll make it a little bit more visually appealing when I have it all finished. The next step on this piece is to uh, cut a, an under bevel. And I'm just going to uh, use my table saw and put the piece up on its edge and cut the bevel. Um, I do this on most of my tables. This is the first time I'm doing it on this new table saw, so we'll see how well it goes. 
I don't anticipate anything going wrong and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and cut it the way I think looks good. As you can see, this tabletop's gonna be beautiful when it's done. Uh, I use the paint thinner. It's, um, it's just like mineral spirits. I clean with it because what will, it will do is show me any spots where um, I still may have some sanding scratches left over. And um, so I can use it to kind of inspect the piece before I actually apply my finish. <laughs> 